Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here. And it's my great joy to welcome you to this service of worship here at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We're so grateful that you are taking time out of your day to worship with us. And we'd love to know uh, who you are and to know that you're here with us. So if you would take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in just a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and also let us know how we can be praying for you this coming week. Now I invite you to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be found on your screen. Let's pray now together. Holy and loving God, in this hour of worship, open our ears to hear you, our lips to praise you, our minds to understand you, our hearts to love you, and when we leave, our hands to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise now as you're able in your body or spirit as we affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ beside me Christ before me, Christ behind me, King of my heart. Christ within me, Christ below me, Christ above me, never to part. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. We now have the privilege of going before God in prayer. Will you join me now as we pray together? Holy and loving God, thank you for gathering us together today in your name. God, thank you that your presence is big enough and powerful enough that you are able to unite us together even across space and time. God, we thank you that your love is always more expansive than we imagine. While we spend our time drawing lines in the sand and deciding who's in and who's out, you open your arms to all who will come. Thank you for the promise that you gave your only son that whoever, whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Jesus, please teach us to love others the way that you do. God, today we pray for all who are going on our high school mission trip this week to El Salvador. We pray for the students and for the adult leaders that will go with them. We pray that you would give them all servants' hearts and the hearts of students 
that their hearts would be open to learn from the very people that they will be serving. God, we pray for our community of Wrightsville Beach and Wilmington. Lord, let this be a place where your kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for our country. Lord, as we approach an election season, help us to value people over politics. We pray for your world, especially for Israel and Gaza, that your peace would break through. We pray for the sick, for the suffering, the lonely, the heartbroken, and the afraid. And we pray for all those whose needs are especially close to our hearts today. And we lift them up before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but that you listen to them. And you have proved yourself time and time again to be good and faithful. And so, Lord, trusting in your unending faithful love, help us to mean what we say as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now into a time of reflection and giving, I'd like to remind you that you can always contribute to the ministries of Wrightsville UMC through the mail and also through our website, wrightsvilleumc.org. Thank you so much for your continued generosity that makes all of our ministries possible, including worship here at The Vine. Let us continue now to worship God. Wrightsville Kids, I'm Pastor Julia, and today I have a really special story to tell you. In the very, very beginning of everything, God made the world, and God made people. And God made people of all different colors and sizes and shapes. And God said that all of these people were good. God loved all of these people. But after a while, people weren't really living the way that God had called them to live. And they weren't being kind to each other, and they didn't know how to live like God wanted them to. So God came up with a plan. God picked a group of people called the Israelites, and God called them out to be a special community. God's special people. Now, God didn't love the Israelites more than everyone else, but he did give them a special job to do, to be a special community that would live the way that God wanted everyone to live, and that they'd be able to make an example for everybody else so that everyone would come to know and love God. But one of the things that the Israelites started doing was to make sure that they could stay as this specific community and to remember all of the ways that they were called to live, they started to just spend time with each other. And they didn't really want to spend time with everybody else who they called Gentiles. And that's how it went on for a long time. Sometimes they would spend a little time together, but mostly they stayed separate. Well, then Jesus came, and Jesus was one of the Israelites. And Jesus started to teach everyone a different way. But after Jesus died and then was raised and went back to heaven, 
not everyone was sure what they were supposed to do. Until one day, Peter, who was one of Jesus' good friends, had a vision. And he had a dream that he was with all different kinds and colors of people. All of these people that he had never spent time with before because he thought God didn't want him to. And it turns out that God actually wanted him to spend time with them. So instead of the Israelites who were following Jesus staying separate, they decided to come join everyone. And they came in and started telling all of the other Gentiles about Jesus. And they learned how to worship God together by following Jesus. And this is what the church looks like now. It turns out that God's love was a whole lot bigger than people sometimes remembered that it was. And that's still true today. Sometimes it can be easy to think that we're God's special people and that other people aren't loved by God as much. But that isn't true. God's love is big enough for everyone and there is plenty of love to go around. So today, I hope that you will thank God for God's really big love and also remember to love everyone around you, whether they look like you or not, whether they think like you or not, whether they act like you or not, because everyone is a child of God. Let's say a prayer now together. God, thank you for your big love. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that there is enough love for all of us. We love you back. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Eunsiu Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Riceville United Methodist Church. It is my great privilege to deliver God's message today. Today, our scripture passage is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Hear the word of God. Now the apostles and the brothers and sisters who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Jopas praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lured by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At the very moment three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we went to the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. Then as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had opened us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given, even to the Gentiles, the repentance that leads to life. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Speak through me and always be on me so that your word might be heard by your people this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In today's scripture, we see Peter returning to Jerusalem after his visit to a Roman centurion called Cornelius, which is described in chapter 10 of Acts. Peter was excited to share the joy of Gentiles' reception of the gospel, but instead of celebration, he faced suspicion and criticism for dining with Gentiles. Let's pause and consider why this was a, such a big deal. To understand what's going on, we need to remember back in the Old Testament history. God had called Abraham and promised to make him the father of a great nation. And as a sign of the covenant he made, God commanded that Abraham and all his male descendants be circumcised. As they grew into a nation, they received specific laws that set them apart from others, especially concerning what they could eat. Abraham's descendants were the Jews, and everyone else was considered Gentiles. At this point in Acts, all Christians came from Jewish backgrounds. Many believed that God's salvation was meant only for Jews, the people who follow His laws. There was a thought in Jerusalem that, well, Gentiles could be saved, but they had to adopt all Jewish laws and tradition first, effectively becoming Jews before they could be Christians. Furthermore, Jews were strict about their food laws. So socializing with the Gentile, especially eating with the Gentile, was seen as turning your back not just on your cultural heritage, but also the special covenant God had made. Now, you can see why the Jewish Christians were more than a little upset. Then, Peter made a choice. In front of the apostles and the others who criticized him, instead of getting into a theological debate, Peter shared his personal experience his vision from God, and the amazing moment when the Holy Spirit came upon the Gentiles. Peter tells a vision he had, a shed full of unclean animals descending from heaven. This vision was not just about changing what was on the dinner menu. It was a profound message about the church opening its door to all nations. At first, Peter hesitated, much like we might hesitate when God nudges us toward something new. But God told him, do not call anything impure that I have made clean. And challenging us to recognize his image in every person. The climax of Peter's story is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Cornelius and his household, clearly illustrating that God is at work. This tells us the church's growth and the kingdom's expansion are driven not merely by human effort, but by God's direct intervention. This is not just a rerun of what happened in Act 10. It's a powerful reaffirmation of God's expansive grace, pushing the church to include more people than it ever imagined before. It asks us to reflect. How do we react when God surprises us breaking us out of our conventional boxes? And how do we handle it when God radically shifts our understanding of His kingdom in unexpected ways? He 
here, we witness the transformation of Peter, a man who initially resists God's new direction because it crossed traditional lines. But after having the same conversation with God repeated three times, Peter chose to empty himself, following God's direction, even though he was uncertain of the outcome and unclear about what was happening in the moment. And once he emptied himself, allowing God to clear away his preconceptions, he became a vessel for God's work, facilitating a radical inclusion that was once unimaginable. Peter's journey teaches us a critical lesson to truly empty ourselves so that God can work freely within us and through us. This is a call for each of us to shed our biases and limitations, to be filled with the Spirit, and to joyfully engage in God's mission. Eventually, in verse 17, Peter acknowledges his own emptiness before God, saying, If then God gave them the same gift that He gave us when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? Since God has that power, those who try to resist it are ultimately wasting their time. Remember, the events in Acts chapter 10 and 11 are not the result of human manipulation or political scheming. They are purely the result of God's work and divine plan. And this divine initiative is not confined to the pages of history. It's a vibrant, it's ongoing invitation. Each of us is called to be like Peter, open to God's surprising and sometimes unsettling invitation that pushes beyond our comfort zones. And this is how the church grows, not by clinging to our preconceived notions, but by responding to the spirit transformative power. Once you accept God's invitation and empty yourself, consider how you can engage as an active participant, not just an observer. Peter set a powerful example for us. He didn't just share a meal with the Gentiles. He spent meaningful time with them, fully participating in their lives. His actions symbolize the gospel's call to be inclusive. Just as Jesus welcomed tax collectors and sinners to dine together, inviting them into the kingdom of God. This act of sharing a table was not merely a social gesture. It was a transformative sign of a new community Christ was creating and Christ is still creating. A community that dismantled the barriers between Jew and Gentile, the clean and unclean. And we recalled the Last Supper, where Jesus established a new covenant through His body and His blood, inviting all, all to partake in His grace. As we reflect on this passage today, we must ask ourselves about the Gentiles in our lives. Who are the people we have viewed as other? How does our faith challenge us to extend a table of fellowship to them? And how do we respond to those different from us? Do we mirror Peter's openness or initial skepticism of the Jerusalem church? The early church is struggling with this expansion, but ultimately recognized that God's vision was far broader than our own. 
So like them, we are called to embrace God's inclusive call and transform our gatherings into places where we are and all are truly welcome. This is not just a call to change our minds, but to change our hearts and actions, actively dismantling the barriers we have built and creating a welcoming table for all. Friends, exactly one year ago, you have expanded your table to include a young Asian female pastor from South Korea, over 7,100 miles away. And today, I call on us to extend our table even further to welcome anyone who seeks God's grace, love, and fellowship in our community. So let us walk in the courage of Peter, embracing the unexpected with faith and joy. Let us continue to be a place where everyone finds a home as you have done for me, where the table is endlessly expanding, and where there are no outsiders or insiders, only beloved children of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for your word to the lessons of acceptance, courage, and divine guidance. Help us to empty ourselves to see your hand at work in our lives and empower us to follow your spirit lead. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Beloved Ricefield, as you go forth, ask yourself, who is your, your Gentile in your life? And how can I expand a table for them? Empty yourself. Make your room for God's work within. Let every act be an extension of the Lord's table and walk in faith, radiating God's love to every soul you encounter. May the love and peace of our God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit go with you and stay with you this day and forevermore. Amen.